Wow, and a big good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you guys are in the world. It's so good to be back with you. It's been weeks, and a lot's happened. I got this new jacket. Well, it's not new. <laughs> Traveling the West, I couldn't help but get a, a cool old uh, jean jacket. Anyway, hey, it really is great to be back with you. Would you... Uh, Tell us where you're from, shout out, and remember, oh, you don't even know this necessarily, but we're going to give away a print from Bay Photo, but you got to be in the chat to qualify because we won't know who you are unless you're in the chat. So make sure you mention something. You can ask a question, you can shout out, you can do whatever you want, but we got to see who you are, okay? All right. Well, listen, we're going to have some fun today. I'm going to talk about my recent just came back from road trip about 18 days traveling through western united states i'll show you here in a second but um before that i'm going to tell you who this show is sponsored by it is sponsored by <laughs> advancing your photography and if you guys haven't already heard I'm actually giving away this book. You just got to cover the postage. Help me with the postage and handling, and we'll ship it right out to you. Uh, just go to the link that Jared's going to put in the uh, chat there, but you can remember it also. Just go to Advancing Your Photography. Now, I want to tell you something. Inside here, there's a special offer. I am basically, for the very first time, I'm offering to work with people in a very close setting to basically one-on-one. -on -one. I'm actually going to go one-on-one -on -one with you to find your goals in photography, to help you overcome your biggest obstacle. That's a special offer as part of the whole package. So don't just, you know, I mean, you can buy the book, of course, by itself or pay for the postage, but really consider that because that's a new service that uh, we're actually offering and I really would love to work with you. Okay, so... What is a road trip all about? Well, listen, there's a lot of things I learned, and I want to pass along some of them. I'm going to pass along five of them to you. It's really important. Top five. It's really important. Uh, get it in here. There we go. Okay, number five. So you got to visualize. If you're going to go out and photograph anything or you're going to create anything, it always starts with visualization and getting a plan, getting a dream. And that starts maybe many, many weeks or months even before you hit the road or you go out. By the way, I want to let you know that this, whatever I'm talking about, could apply to you walking out your front door and exploring your own community. It doesn't mean that you got to get in a car like I did and drive around for 18 days. You could walk to a place you've been to before or a new place or whatever. It, all these points will apply, okay? So first of all, the number five, we're going backwards, is visualization. Now, I started this particular trip by rereading a couple of books I'd read many times or a long time ago. This one is On the Road by Jack Kerouac. This is an amazing book. He wrote this. Uh, after traveling back and forth the United States. And apparently he wrote it in five days, six days. Kind of hard to believe, but he had a roll, a continuous roll of paper in the typewriter and just sat down and typed it all out without any punctuation. So his editor actually had to parse it. He had to split it up into paragraphs and put the, you know, punctuation and that sort of thing. It was a stream of of communication from him. And I actually mentioned this book specifically in my book, Create, because it's an example of letting your work flow. Okay, this is kind of a side note, but when you're in the process of creating something or communicating, you should let it flow. Don't try to edit yourself. Don't stop yourself. Don't overthink it. This is an important side note. It isn't the main thing I'm mentioning, but I read this as a point of inspiration because he had traveled all over the United States, back and forth, back and forth. And I, I wanted to just see what he had uh, come across. Another book I read, 
Travels with Charlie by John Steinbeck, an amazing author. He put his, uh, after 25 years of kind of being off the road, he decided to get in touch with America again. He took his dog, Charlie, and they traveled throughout the United States. And both of these were inspiring to me, and they helped me kind of visualize what I wanted to do, which was get in touch with Western United States, but also to reconnect some of the places I'd been before. Now that's number four on my list is go back. What does that mean? Now, a lot of photographers I've interviewed on the show mention this. Go back to places you have photographed before and photograph there again, because you're going to have a different perspective. You're going to see things, but there's a connection to from your previous work to where you are right now that I find very valuable. It's more than just what happens with your photographs. In my case, I had an interesting series of places that I had been to before. Oh, by the way, let me just show you where we went. Okay, that's not the right screen. Okay, let's go to this screen. Here we go. Okay, this is a map. This is Google Maps, uh, where this trip took us. A long trip. We live in Carmel, California. We went north. Uh, this is, this, by the way, was all full of smoke in here when we left. It was just thick with smoke. Truckee, which is right near Lake Tahoe, that was our first night. And then we drove all the way through Nevada, which is a hot, long drive, to a small town in Idaho called Twin Falls. And from there, we went up into the mountains, Jackson Hole, which is just unbelievable. I think I'll show you some of my photos from there. I will in a minute. Uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, one of my favorite places. I had been there before. I've been to Truckee many times. I've driven through Nevada. I haven't been through Idaho, so that was new. Uh, from there, we went to Yellowstone. I've never been there before. I'll show you. They're known for the geysers. I'll show you some of my geyser photographs. We went into Montana. I haven't been there before. Um, we actually stopped first of all, in Bozeman, and then we went up to a, a place called Three Forks where these rivers converge. Lewis and Clark, if you know your United States history, these guys found the trail, the Oregon Trail, I believe it was, and I forget where it started. I should know. Maybe Jared can look it up and tell us where it started, but they ended up in Oregon, and they went through Three Forks where there's a convergence of three rivers, and that was pretty cool. We came back to a ranch in Big Sky, and then we that was kind of as far north as we went, Three Forks, and we turned around and came back and headed to Moab, Utah. I'm going to show you some of these photographs in a minute. Durango. Now, I'd been to Moab, and there was kind of an interesting story there. And this, this goes back to what I was saying. Go back to places you'd been. Moab, Utah, I actually went to uh, when I was 14 years old, and I returned. It's called Canyonlands. I returned when I was 19, but I hadn't been back since. That was a few years ago. And we had to find, it was really difficult to find the exact place I had been. It was a needle in a haystack, and that's kind of a joke because where we found it was in the needle section of Canyonlands, and I shot a little film there. I took some photographs. I'm going to compile that into a film about my earlier photographs there and then the most recent ones coming back. Same thing with Durango. I actually taught at a mountaineering school right outside of Durango up in these mountains here in the San Juan Mountains. I spent an entire summer there teaching mountaineering and then when I was 16 I had actually gone through a mountaineering school Google Maps doesn't let you put all those stops. So from Durango, we headed back to Williams, which is on, this is in Arizona, which is on the famous Route 66. Unfortunately, if Stephen's listening, we didn't go to Winslow. I really wanted to, but Winslow is a little off our track here. So we didn't get to Winslow like you had. We came back this way to a 
town called Bakersfield, California, which turned out to be quite interesting, and then back home to Big Sur, and then here we are. So that was our trip. Now, going back to places has a lot of interesting side value because you get to kind of do a comparison. What you sh Like I said, you, know, you see what you saw before, but where you are now. And Florian Schultz, the fantastic wildlife photographer, mentions this as an important point because you get to know an area and you get more familiar with it. So you, got, you come back and you reshoot it. That can be a tremendous advantage. So that's, that's it. And again, that could be going back to in your own town, going back someplace you photographed before, but definitely do that. Okay, number three, make it a multimedia trip. <laughs> there we go. Multimedia, shoot photos, shoot videos, write. You know, uh, Dan Miller, of course, talks about that a lot. But I really believe it's important to capture in different forms, put it together. You can put it together in terms of a book or a film. That's what I'm going to be doing with all this stuff I've gathered. I'm actually, you know, I'm going to put it into several different films, maybe into a written form like a blog post. Eventually it could end up in a book. That's one of the cool things about traveling around and noting what you're doing and taking notes of where you've been because later on, you can utilize that. Like if you do want to write a book or you do want to write a blog post or whatever it is, you've got it already noted down where you were and, and important highlights. That's really important, you guys. It's making it into something and that's, that's super important. Okay, number two, you know, I could, I could have made 20 of these things, but number two, have a soundtrack. I am inspired by music. And I bet you are too. And Joseph Holmes, the amazing landscape photographer, I asked him, you know, what his point of inspiration was. And he said, the Beatles. Now here he is, this very calm, quiet uh, landscape photographer, you know. And he said his inspiration came from going to a Beatles concert in 1966 at... Uh, Candlestick Park, the one of their last, it may have been their last uh, performance. And he said he got so energized because there was so much screaming and vitality and all this stuff going on from the music that it just inspired him as a photographer. Well, I'm definitely inspired by music. And it, it forms a soundtrack to your trip. And it, it provides a layer, just like a soundtrack does in a movie, it provides a layer that kind of keeps everything together. Now, we have a satellite radio, which is fortunate that my wife, Jan, set that up because otherwise we were in places we never would have been able to receive any of this stuff. And, you know, we listen to a bunch of stuff. We listen to some podcasts, but two channels we listen to more than any others. One was Bruce Springsteen, who I'm a dear fan of. My wife is even more of a fan. She's the one that basically turned me on to him, but the guy's amazing. If you're not familiar with his music, you should be, because he really knows how to use words. And, you know, it's interesting. Photographs are a visual form of communication, and words are written or, or audible. And, of course, when we're communicating, we can communicate in any form, whether it's visually through a photograph or a film, or through music. Those are all forms of communication, written, the spoken word, the written word. And it's really inspiring to hear somebody use a different form of communication and turn that into your photography. I got an idea, which I've never done before, when I'm gonna, I'm gonna test this out with you guys. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but he inspired me. We also, going back to the Beatles, we listened to the Beatles channel a lot. Now, what was cool about these channels, it wasn't just their music, but there were a lot of interviews as well. We were, for instance, listening on our way back, listening on Bruce Springsteen's birthday, which happens to be September 23rd. They played his back-to-back -back, uh, shows that he recorded specifically uh, for his channel. And that was really interesting because he interviewed different people, 
but he also talked a lot about not just his music, but about social issues that are obviously very important right now. So this all rubs off, you know, this is part of getting stoked, as we say in California. This is part of, of getting that inspiration going. So use, use music, use that as a soundtrack to inspire you to get your, you know, your juices flowing and, and, you know, think in new directions, which is really important. The last point is the biggest one of all. And this is interesting. You know, you guys ever gone on a treasure hunt? Have you ever looked for something valuable? Have you ever gone? Well, scavenger hunt is interesting because that's where you go out and you look for stuff and you've got a the team that brings back, you know, the tin cans and the radiator and the this and the that, whatever it is, the one that brings back all the stuff first wins. Well, there's also treasure hunts where, you know, people go out looking for something really valuable, whether it's gold or or buried, some kind of buried treasure. It could be, you know, anything. It could be diamonds, you know. Indiana Jones went out looking for that perfect jewel jewel of the nile i guess it is actually and indiana jones was a whole different anyway there's many 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 stories about looking for treasure and i made an interesting discovery about that because i in durango it actually that is a silver mining area and those people went there specifically to find silver but i'm going to read you Speaking of music, this is from Cheryl, Quo, Cheryl Crow. And one of the lines of her song is, it's not having what you want. It's wanting what you've got. I, I'm going to take this apart because that quote is really important. And it, it actually layers onto so many parts of photography. It's not having what you want. It's wanting what you've got. And again, you know, one of the reasons people love our channel, and I hear this from you guys over and over again, is we're not talking about equipment, 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 equipment. It's that lens. If you only had that lens, you'd be a much better photographer. If you only had that new this, that, you only had this new software, you you know, that's, that's an example of not having what you want. So... I don't have the right lens. I'm not a good photographer. Bull, you know what? It's not having what you want. It's, it's wanting what you've got. Like if you really want what you already have, you already have the camera that is going to transform you into an incredible photographer. I don't care what camera that is. You've already got it. You own it right now. And if you say, well, Mark, I don't own any cameras. I've only got you know, my phone, that's the camera that's going to make you a great photographer. It's not that, I mean, look, I, I can geek out as much as anybody else, but you've got to set your goals on what you've already got and want it. And that could be how you shoot, where you shoot, look at it and really own it really own it and perfect it make it as good as you possibly can or make it tell the story that you want that's the biggest treasure of all it really is you know having is an interesting concept it means a lot of things it means being able to reach something touch it own it feel that it's yours you know how you can have something or you can not have something like if you're, if you're in a bad mood, you could be in the most beautiful place in the world and not find any photographs at all. You just go, ah, I don't, you know, this is, I'm, I'm just not in the mood or I just don't see anything. But if you, on the other hand, are in the mood of having and finding photographs, you can find them anywhere. This is like one of these like tricks, tricks and secrets of life because we can get so caught up in consumerism, which is basically we're being bombarded by that constantly. You've got to have this new thing, whether it's a car or this or that or food that you should eat or you shouldn't eat or this. Or, you know, we're being bombarded by this consumerism. And that, unfortunately, that's part of our modern world, right? 
in the older days of photography, not to go way back, but in the older days, you could buy a camera and use it your entire life. And, you know, these cameras here are, are timeless. The, you know, this Rolleiflex, this Leica, this 4x5, you could use forever and ever and ever. They never go out of date. And our modern world is moving fast and things are changing all the time. And yes, there's cool new features that come out, but don't get lost in that. Find your treasure. What is your treasure? Is it about a mechanical thing? I claim that your treasure is within your heart. It's within your soul. It's within you. And I'm going to preach here for a minute. You have within you your unique viewpoint, your unique look at life, which is different than anybody else. And I do not, I do not agree that all photographs or all forms of art have already been, you know, captured. I don't believe that's true at all. I think you have your unique viewpoint that's different than mine. It's different than Bob Holmes. It's different than Dan Milner. It's yours and yours alone. And if you own that, and if you really go with that, that is the key that opens a lot of doors. That's number five. Okay. I hope that helps. Uh, uh, and if you guys have any comments or questions at this point, I'm happy to hear them. Jared, do we have any yet, or should I just keep rambling uh, on? We don't have any yet. I think I would say one, though. Sure. Um, and I think just because I know it's something that is uh, talked a lot about, but um that sharing your perspective that mark was just talking about um you know you guys remember that that goes in so many different ways and that's not just the visualization the equipment that you use and how you capture it but it's also your processing and your sharing that's just as much a part of the cycle you know we totally. talk about the cycle of photography and the way the way that you share your work and the way you process your work is just as much a part of your viewpoint. Uh, so don't think that once you've taken the picture that that's it, that, you know, that's the end of your input. Even Absolutely. when you process the photo, it's not over. You share your work, and that's just as much a part of your unique viewpoint. Absolutely. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something here. I have not been home long enough to edit these photos. These are unedited. This is just a quick selection. It's not even what I will call my best or anything, but I'm just going to go over a few of them with you guys, just sort of show you the story. I'm going to show you also some of my previous photos. This is the Grand Tetons. There is my wife, Jan, who served as my model throughout the whole trip, which is always handy to have your model with you. And, um, you know, the Tetons are amazing. I've been there many times. I have previous photographs. This is uh, Yellowstone. There are uh, this is a geyser. I have a video of this. I think I put it on Instagram. Um, and I, these things are like forms or like almost like life forms. They keep changing over and over again. I shot this at F22. Unfortunately, there's a lot of junk on my lens. You can see these spots. That's not so cool. I'm going to have to deal with that. Um, this is another shot of people they're sort of like mesmerized by these geysers. You know how you can look at something like a fire and just get drawn into it and just keep watching it? So these are, these are groups of people who are just watching these geysers change their form. This was uh, near uh, Three Forks. I mentioned that to you. Um, Montana, a very dry area we actually went up i think this is um i'm trying to remember which exactly this might have been called buffalo jump i think it was um and again you know there's there's my model this this is a snapshot okay hey by the way i have a you know you take mixes of snapshots and serious photographs this is just a snapshot of us uh fly fishing in uh montana which was really cool this is uh, Arches National uh, Park in Utah, and it's really amazing. Uh, I'm going to go, I haven't, again, these are unedited. I haven't gone through these. I just picked a few. Um, the different perspectives you get from looking through, you know, one of the arches 
out into, you can just see these just go back farther and farther into the environment. Uh, another shot in the same, more or less the same area. Uh, this was also in Canyonlands, but a different, uh, different part of Canyonlands. And this was one of Jan's photographs taken with an iPhone, actually. A very nice photograph. Needs to be edited a little bit, but uh, not bad for an iPhone photograph. Uh, again, a more or less a snapshot. This is in um, a del it's called the Delicate Arch. It's pretty amazing. It's where she's standing is actually quite scary because it just drops off on the other side, on both sides. You got to really pay attention to what you're doing there. And it's, uh, it's quite a view. It's quite overwhelming. There's a lot of people waiting to go out there. And there I am doing the same thing. Uh, this was in another part of Canyonlands. I, you know, listen, one of the things I like to do is look at things from a different perspective. Uh, I like the kind of the negative space of the, again, this will be edited, but the negative space of um, these are the rocks that are just surrounding, but the clouds opening into the sky. I have a lot of different versions of this. I'm going to decide which one I end up with and which one I like the best. This is shot in the same area, uh, just kind of a different version because this is, I stopped it down. I think I went down a stop. That's why it's so dark and there's no detail there. But I really want to make sure I was capturing uh, the clouds. And this one, I opened it back up so that I could get some of the detail of it. Another version. Again, I love looking at sky. I like looking at, you know, sometimes what's on the ground is the most obvious thing. But when we move our camera, you see the sky and clouds. And that was kind of cool. This was one of the last things we did. We went on a uh, steam locomotive and I shot a lot of videos. I shot uh, inside the train looking out and that sort of thing. But this was at the very end. This is the engineer. And I uh, photographed a number of different versions of this. This will become a black and white. I like this because he's looking at something. Um, go back there. He's looking off at something. I love the black and white already there of the train. And uh, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to play around with this. This is another just snapshotty thing. Route 66 for you guys not in the United States is, was a primary route to go from um, east to west. And it's, it's kind of part of our culture and it's, it's rather historic. Um, I'm going to go just take a minute here. And I'm going to go to some of my previous stories uh, going. While you're doing that, yeah. I have a quick question for you. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, so for those uh, who may not know, the during the majority of the time that Mark was out there, uh, we had the horrific wildfires that were affecting the West, Yeah. Uh, which caused a lot of smoke everywhere. So I was wondering, did that smoke affect you much in the areas that you were at? Did you find that it made an interesting, unique effect or that it was harmful to trying to get pictures or just really no effect? Just curious. If, yeah, if the smoke was mostly annoying and distracting. Um, you know, sometimes smoke can give you those beautiful sunsets, but unfortunately that really, it, it's at a cost. First of all, nobody wants to just breathe in a lot of smoke so they can get an orange sunset. But it wasn't, a, it wasn't a particularly aesthetic look. It was mostly just hazy. And I, one of the things I wanted to do was some astrophotography, but the sky was just too hazed out. I couldn't do that. I took a tripod with me for that purpose, lugged this thing around, and I was never able to you know, utilize it. We, it took a while for us to get out of the smoke, and fortunately, we finally did. And, you know, it was so wonderful to see blue skies again. So uh, earlier, an earlier trip, I obviously photograph a lot every time we travel. This is in um, Paris uh, in the Tuileries, which is a garden uh, that is in the middle of Paris. This photograph is interesting because I wanted to capture, this is a carousel. I wanted to capture the motion of the carousel. But I didn't have a tripod with me. I wanted a uh, slow shutter speed. I had no way of you know, hand holding it and getting that to happen. 
This was over 10 years ago, maybe 14 years ago. So an early digital camera. Now there's image stabilization, which can help you a lot, but we didn't have it back then. So I put it on a pole. There are these um, uh, poles that come out, you know, that just they're called stanchions, I think, but they're in different places in the park. And I just put the camera on top of it and steadied it. And I think I shot this at about one uh, twenty fifth of a second. I may even have it here in my uh, uh, 0.6 seconds at f29. Interesting. So uh, that was from, you know, again, trying to tell this story of the motion, but holding it still enough to capture it, but not having a tripod. That's, you know, sometimes a challenge. Let's pick up a couple others here. This was on that same trip, and you probably have seen this in my book um, on composition. This is, again, my wife Jan in uh, the Dorsey Museum. This has a lot of compositional elements in it because one of the things I love about, uh, I love to use is geometry. And this has lots of geometric forms in it. And basically, if you look at it, you've got, you know, the whole thing is a big rectangle. We've got circles, we've got pie shape, you know, pieces of geometry. Uh, you know, you even got kind of a uh, mesh work here. But one of the things you can do, this, this is a pattern. And one of the compositional forms that, I, again, I've written about in my book is breaking the pattern. So what does that mean to break a pattern? It means to offset something. So you've got a certain pattern, but if you do something that breaks it or, ch or changes it, it can really make it pop. In this case, she's standing off center. What if she'd been standing dead center? Well, that would not have broken the pattern. So, you know, that's an interesting compositional form right there. Um, and and that, was, that was really cool to go. This is just another shot through the clock. So this was, the Dorsey Museum was a museum. I mean, it was a train station and they turned it into a museum. And this is looking through the window of the clock out into Paris. Uh, this is another photograph from that same trip. Uh, I had pre-visualized, I, I wanted to come back with a photograph of, this is a very classic car. It's called a du chevaux, which means two horses, right? In uh, French. It's, <laughs> it's not a two horsepower engine, but it's a very small engine and it's a Citron. And the classic color is red. I did process this, as you can see, everything is black and white, except for the du chevaux. And I let the motion add to the whole, you know, the feeling of motion that was already there. But I stood, you know, I, I knew that I wanted to get this image on that trip. This goes back to point, you know, the first point I mentioned, which is visualize. It's good to go on a trip and have a few photographs already in mind. You might even make a whole shot list. Um, these are sort of snapshotty type, you know, images of patterns in, in uh, you know, Paris market. Um, same thing, not, not really serious photographs. Again, this is kind of like, I like to take photographs that aren't necessarily anything but just form. And this is a um, form of, of these bikes, which are very different than American bikes. And that's what struck my eye. You know, these are again. Now, this photograph was from Canyonlands. I told you I had gone there when I was 19 years old. We went back to the same place. This was an earlier photograph. I'm going to actually dig up a lot of those photographs. Um, if you, there's kind of a superstition about uh, horseshoes that they're good luck. But if you hang them upside down, your luck drains out. And if you saw this was an old homestead that had been abandoned, the guy who lived there, I assume it was a guy, all his luck drained out. It's kind of a metaphor. Um, a starfish washed up on the beach with rocks around it. Again, another form type uh, image. A dog print in the sand. You know, uh, I like to use different elements that you're you're kind of like contrasting elements here. So on one hand, you've got this 
This, unfortunately, is oil that had been washed up on the beach. There had been an oil spill of some kind and darkened this sand here. And the single dog print, where is the other one? Dogs have four feet. Why, why do we only see one? Well, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Sometimes it's good to have a little mystery in your, in your photographs. Um, this is a place I recently visited, and this again was from many, many years ago, called Morro Bay. It's a town in, on the coast in, of California. This is an example uh, uh, of leading lines. This was in Vermont. Uh, a girl that I knew was going, we were walking together, going to the horses. As I often do, I use people as models that I hang around with. And I said to her, I'm going to, I i can't remember if I told her to walk ahead or I probably walked backwards. Um, and I said, I want you to stand right there. She's my point. Now, what makes leading lines really work well is if you have something for your eye to center on. These are the leading lines of the road. But if she hadn't been there, I mean, just kind of imagine she's not there. It'd be kind of interesting. I mean, you're, it's this picture of a road. But with a person there, and again, I really believe that people are what <laughs> I like to put in a photograph. I mean, yeah, you've seen a lot of my photographs don't have people in them, but more and more I'm only capturing people in an image. And let me go back there. Okay, so it tells an interesting story. She was carrying her saddle. She's carrying the reins, and she's turning around. I probably prompted her. I am not adverse to being the director in my photographs and asking people to do certain things like this photograph is fairly famous. I actually took this photograph, captured it in the eighth grade. These are my fellow classmates jumping off a sand dune. This is the edge of the sand dune. The sun is setting behind them so they're completely backlit. I had taken some images from the side. It wasn't particularly interesting. And uh, there's a whole story about this photograph that's in my book, Create. But um, I asked them, when I, can't, when I say jump, I want you guys to jump. So I had them run towards me, and I was down below them, and I said, jump. And this is an example of the decisive moment. I pressed the shutter at just the right time to get this arc. Now, what if I'd waited another second? She would have been down. This guy would have been down. Who knows, it would have been a completely different photograph, but fortunately, I, I captured it just at that moment. Um, a lot of different examples of this same photograph. This was shot with a Nikon F. For those of you who've been around a long time, that was the original. Uh, not the original, but one, really pretty much the classic 35 millimeter camera. Uh, and I shot, I borrowed it from someone who was on this trip with me to Mexico. I shot like one roll of ectochrome, which uh, this blue door worked really well with uh, in Mexico. It's the blue door. It's a door to a church. I had shot only black and whites up to this point. And um, go back there, sorry. Uh, and, you know, I had something like one roll of film, I think, of, of color. And I added that to my mix of black and whites. Anyway, those are just some examples of previous trips. I'm just going to pick a couple more. And, and just in terms of, you know, what I was mentioning of planning ahead and, you know, kind of visualizing, well, I was in Africa. Of course, I wanted pictures of all the various different animals, but I really wanted this uh, the mother zebra and the baby zebra kind of, you know, together. That was a, a, a pre-visualized photograph. I was really looking for it and looking for capturing all the different animals, you know, that you can see. This is, this is um, in Strawberry Fields Central Park, John Lennon, and we just past or just coming up to his uh, unfortunate uh, anniversary of his death. Um, he wrote a song called Imagine. They, you know, put a mosaic in the park and people would come along and decorate it, in this case with 
uh, you know, these the fern and the flower, and it changes all the time. And it's just a good reminder for all of us to always imagine. Always imagine what we want to photograph. Imagine how you want your life to be. Imagine what you want to do with your photographs. What story do you want to tell? Do you want to create books with them as you hear me and Dan and Bob Holmes? I love it if you guys would create some books because they're a great way to collect your photographs into one place and also put your thoughts there in written form. Um, you can put them into a film, and I made a film called Imagine. If you haven't seen it, maybe Jared could throw that link up there. Um, imagination opens the door. Imagination is the key, and that's actually contained in the little film I made. I think it's a two-minute film. You should watch it afterwards. And um, that kind of leads me back to that first point that I opened with. So listen, you guys, I hope these few points resonate for you. I want to, I've got so many things I'm really excited about. Um, having come back, I feel like I've got my batteries recharged, you know, and I'm ready to, to launch a whole bunch of new videos. I've got new ideas. I want you guys along with me. Um, a couple of things make sure you are in the AYP club. If you haven't already joined that, Jared, put the link up there. Uh, get a copy of my book because you're, if you don't have it already, there's a lot of information here. It's not just because I wrote this book. It's from my interviews, over a thousand hours of interviews I did with so many talented photographers. And I didn't just take all that information and kind of randomly mix it together. I put it there very specifically because it works. And there's a lot of stuff that they said that didn't work. I didn't put that in the book. You know, I sifted through, you know, what what will work maybe just for them and what will work for all the rest of us. That's what I put there. The universal truths, the things that will hold true and be timeless. And that's why I wrote this book. I wanted it to be a timeless manual that you could open at any time, you could carry around with you and refer to it often. And it has, it has the five steps of the cycle of photography. You don't know what those are, you got to read the book. Okay, Jared, I hope I haven't forgotten anything. We're going to give away a print. Have you done your selection process behind I the scenes? I have. I'll give, I'll give anybody a chance if they want to get yeah, in you, quick. Uh, and while we're doing that, uh, just to go over again, next week we've got three shows planned. Oh, yeah, three shows. Uh, and so we've got our new show. Uh, we'll be coming back with that to catch you up with all the things that have been going on. Wednesday, and then we're right? Coming, yep, that'll be Wednesday. And then Thursday we're coming back with a fantastic show of the Critique Show again. You guys That's loved right. it so much. We had so much fun doing it. Uh, we're going to make this a regular thing now. So once again, be sure to go into AYP Club, put your photos in, and put hashtag critique yeah. or uh, somewhere notify to me uh, that I can use you know whatever photos from your collection if that's if you're fine with that too and you don't have a specific photo. Yeah. So be sure to do that. And then on Friday we've got Bob Holmes joining us. So that's gonna uh, be it's fun. gonna be a really good week. So make sure that you're subscribed, that you're following us on social media and especially that you're part of the AYP club, that's the best way uh, to stay up to date with our new shows. So Absolutely. anyway, we do have a drawing for the, uh, for the drum, big photo print. Drum roll, please. And, and Jared? it is Joe uh, Salerno. I believe that's how you pronounce your name. I'm terrible with names, but uh, if, if you can reach out to us, congratulations on winning congratulations, the print. Congratulations, Joe. Uh, easiest Easiest way is to join the AYP club. That makes it very easy for us to find you. Otherwise, uh, you can reach out to us, uh, and we'll get you connected with getting your prize. And what does he win? What, what, what is Bay Photo is giving winning. him? We're giving uh, the print for today is a 16 by 24 maple wood print. So you'll get a choice of a natural or white finish, eight different border options. Uh, so I think you'll be very pleased uh and it's just a great way i've seen a lot of bay photos work in different people's houses 
and it's beautiful. It, it's fantastic. So um, That's I hope you uh, can find a great image to get up there and share with your friends and family and your guests. And hey, listen, I want to just I'm looking at the chat here, and Paul, thanks for joining us. And you, Kobe, where are you? Petaluma, Petaluma, yeah, I've been there many times. Terry is in Dallas, and Lorraine in San Diego. Is it really 115 there? That's un. It, it was 115. Back Look at the temperature variation. Right and then it's we've got awful. somebody was saying it was 10 degrees. Yeah, here, uh, Mark H. It's kind of cold in Germany, like 10 degrees centigrade what so look at the temperature variation from you guys that's crazy and uh wild okay well listen if it's really hot i hope you stay cool and if you're cold i hope you stay warm <laughs> and the most important thing is to stay creative and i hope i can help you guys with that. i'm going to tell you a couple of things that we decided on our trip too i am opening up a um coaching program where you guys can get personal coaching from me both in uh, in the physical sense where if you come to Carmel we're going to be doing some workshops here outside workshops are okay here we can walk around together uh, and photograph I'm going to take you guys to some of the most unbelievably iconic photographic sites that have been used by amazing photographers Edward Weston Ansel Adams anyway Stay tuned for those. Those are going to be coming up. But if you can't travel here physically, I'm going to be doing um, coaching where we will, you know, via the magic of Skype, <laughs> look at your photographs, talk about them one to one in small groups. That's coming up. And again, if you take advantage of that package that you'll see within my book, you can uh, have my first coaching session free as part of that. And I guarantee you, you are going to walk away from that or come away from that with a new perspective. You know, we're going to accomplish a lot in a little bit of time. So I hope you guys can sign up for that. Those are new things coming your way. We're going to roll out a whole bunch of new videos. I'm going to test out some new things. I need you guys to help us grow AYP. I believe you. I, I hear you guys telling me this is the best channel on YouTube. I, you know, you've said it enough times and I've kind of gotten past my own modesty where I now kind of believe that's true. I do think it's true. You know why? Because we're talking about creativity and photography, no matter where you are, no matter what you're using, you can tune in to those creative points. And I don't think anybody has brought more amazing photographers in one place than we have on AYP. And I think that's really incredibly valuable. But I need you guys to help us grow. That's the first and foremost thing that you can do is share these videos, tell your friends, tell your own story about how AYP has helped you. You know, we all love stories. Tell your story. How has it improved your photography? Get out there, you know. We got to communicate. And the best way to communicate is through your own channels, with your own friends, with your own social media, whatever it is. Tell them about it. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I imagine by now you have, but if you haven't, please do so. Share, like, do all those things. Leave your comments. I really try to, between Jared and I, we try to answer every one of your comments. Uh, if we don't, just hit us up again. We will. I mean, we really, really try to do that. And tune in on Wednesday for the Critique Show. Make sure you leave your photograph in there and you hashtag it, as Jared said. Jared, have I left uh, anything Wednesday's out? Wednesday's the new show. Thursday's the critique show. I'm sorry. Wednesday is the news show. Good. Thanks for correcting me. News. And Thursday is critiquing and Friday is Bob and probably Andrea will join us as well. And it's going to be a really exciting season here. We're into a new season. Fall started on the 23rd. We're officially in fall with 115 degrees. That's a hot fall. Anyway, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me. Stay, stay, stay safe. Stay well. And one last thing and say it with me. Okay. Remember to get out 
and capture your own images of life. See you guys soon. See you on Wednesday. Take care. Thank you.